OSI Soft Cloud Services is a database platform as a service designed for storing, retrieving, and analyzing real-time operations data, expanding the traditional PI system that lives on-premise. With OCS, people in and out of your organization have flexible and secure access to operations data. Different use cases would be served better with data available in the cloud. This includes data sharing, partners using OCS as a back-end system, remote monitoring, and data science processes. In this video, we'll follow a typical workflow. First, we'll manually create an asset by mapping streams, configuring metadata, and status. Next, we'll test and explore the asset through the trend visualization. Once we're happy with the asset, we'll convert it to an asset type and use the asset rule builder to mass produce similar assets. Finally, we'll look at using data views to extract the data and enable applications such as machine learning and business intelligence. We're ready to get started, but don't forget to stick around until the end of the video for some final tips. Now, let's go to Asset Explorer and group a bunch of streams into a single object. Let's create a pump asset and connect it to our streams. I'll test out a new asset, and if I'm happy with it, I'll then convert it into an asset type. An asset type is a form of template to create similar assets, so I'll ignore this window. For metadata, I could for example add location, and provide a default value of Sydney. Also, I'll add a rating. This is going to be 2000 and the type integer. I'll set an appropriate UOM, unit of measurement, from the drop-down list, or simply type it in. Under Properties, I'll add the streams that are going to be part of this asset. Clicking Add Stream Reference gives a list of all the stream types that have been created on the system. I'll hold down Control, select the Sydney Pump 01 streams for Flow, Pressure, and State. I'll rename them appropriately. Here, I could configure the UOMs, but since I see they've already been set up, I'll leave it. Status will be an indicator of correct operation. Click Add Status Configuration. Currently, Asset status only supports string and num, so the state property is the only one available here. Map the value 0 for correct operation, 1 for warning, and 2 for critical failure. Clicking Save completes the configuration of the asset. Now, let's look at the properties of the asset to make sure it fits our needs. Under Properties, I can select Flow, Pressure, and State to see them displayed in the trend. For more details, I can move from Asset Explorer to the Trend tool by clicking View Full Trend. Here, I can search for and add more assets or streams to my trend. I can change the way the trends appear, and I can click here to remove a trend I previously added. I can zoom out or into the trend using the time bar and selecting an appropriate time range. The trending tool allows us to add cursors, highlighting a particular piece of information at a particular time that was interesting. It also computes different statistics on the information between those two cursors, like minimum, maximum, and average. Our asset configuration looks great. Let's go back to Asset Explorer and convert this asset into an asset type, making it easier to create similar pump assets. I'll select the asset I've just created and click here to save as asset type. I'll write in an appropriate name and click Create. Operation successful. I can go to Asset Types and see that it has been created. Now, the metadata values that my asset had have been set as the default on the asset type. If I wish to change these, I can select the asset type and click Edit Asset Type.
Now we can use the asset type to easily create more assets with similar properties. I just have to select the asset type here. But what if we have many assets to create and we don't want to add them one by one? Well, we can use an asset rule. The asset rule will do this for us by identifying patterns in the stream names. This is useful for creating a lot of similar assets quickly. Click add a rule and enter an appropriate name. There's the option to select an asset type. This way, the assets created with the asset rule inherit the properties of the asset type. Select a stream to use as the basis of the naming pattern for the asset rule. Next, we will use the builder to create the asset rule. Prosys is our simulation server, so we'll ask the rule to capture that word literally. Same with the dot delimiter. We'll capture the next group of letters as pump location. Again, we'll capture the dot literally. P is for our pump asset. We'll capture the dash literally. We'll capture the number as pump ID. Capture the dot literally. And finally define FV for our measurement. Next. Now we are asked to identify which part of the stream name referred to as a token is the measurement. We'll rename the token values by generating appropriate mappings. Our P asset is a pump. We'll use the ID number as it is. And finally, for our measurements, FV for flow, PV for pressure, and ZH for state. Next, we need to configure our assets based on the identified tokens, ensuring that each asset has a unique ID and name. As expected, the asset preview creates four assets based on the streams which match the asset rule. If we now go back to Asset Explorer, we'll find our four pumps created automatically from the rule. Data views allow you to curate, organize and shape your data to enable other applications and users like third-party analytics providers, machine learning, and business intelligence. Click Add Data View. Here, search for the data you'd like to download as a CSV file or bring into Excel or Power BI. Select Assets and, for example, search for all Sydney pumps. Give the data view an appropriate name and click Save to save the query. Based on this query, we'll select the data we'd like to send. Click Add to add in more columns of data. For example, Flow. Summary types such as Maximum are also available. After adding Location as a column in the view, Click here to group the data based on this information. Manually refresh the view to see the effect. Finally, click Save and Close to create the data view. To download this data, use the API console. Alternatively, you can retrieve data views from OCS through the OSIsoft Cloud Services Power BI Connector bringing the data into Microsoft Power BI for advanced data visualization and analysis. You can download the Power BI connector from the OSIsoft customer portal. For more information on installing and configuring the connector, click here. Thank you for sticking around for some final tips. If you find yourself running the same queries every day, you can use the Share Filtered Assets button to bookmark the query URL in your browser or share with colleagues. Click the Share Trending Session button to copy the URL of the workspace. 
share this link to give others the same view of the trend that they can then use to troubleshoot problems. And finally, avoid multiple clicks and access a previously created data view quickly by bookmarking the API URL.